What is aquascaping? That is a question I get asked a lot. And the best short answer I can give you is, aquascaping is creating a natural underwater layout. The biggest influence in aquascaping came from the legendary Mr. Takashi Amano. With his company Aqua Design Amano, he has made a huge impact on the aquarium hobby. In this complete aquascaping beginner's guide, I'll do my best to set you up for success by showing you the basics of aquascaping. Most aquascapers like to use rimless open top aquariums made from extra clear glass with minimal clear silicone and this is for a number of reasons. The clear glass and minimal silicone reduce any distractions when viewing the aquarium. An open top tank also provides the opportunity to look into the aquascape from above. And an open aquarium also makes it easier to do regular maintenance. And most important, an open aquarium gives us the opportunity to let hardscape and plants come out of the aquarium. So it provides another dimension. Of course you can use any type of aquarium you like. And I suggest you choose something that suits your home interior and suits your budget. And if you are new to the hobby, I also recommend to start with a smaller size aquarium. An aquarium around 45 to 60 liters or 15 to 20 gallons is great for beginners and easy to maintain. To start building an aquascape, we first need a substrate. Now you can use gravel or sand, but if you want to achieve great results and the best possible plant growth, I recommend to use aqua soil. It is a little bit more expensive, but it has a lot of benefits. Soil is an active substrate that contains a lot of nutrients and it slowly releases these nutrients to feed the plant roots. Soil will also make the water slightly more acidic as it lowers the pH. This is great as most aquatic plants prefer softer water. Another great benefit of soil is that it has something that's called a high cation exchange capacity. Now you can forget about that. But just remember that soil can soak up nutrients from the water column, lock that into the substrate and slowly release it to feed the plant roots. Aquasol is also very beginner friendly since it is a complete substrate and doesn't require you to add anything else. Of course there are a lot of additives on the market, but you really don't need these as a beginner. It also does not need to be washed, so you can pour it straight into your aquarium and start scaping. One of the main goals with aquascaping is to create a sense of depth. So we want to try to make the aquarium look bigger and deeper than it actually is. And one way we can achieve that is by creating a slope with our soil. So when you are placing the soil into the aquarium, we want to have a thin layer in the front and a thicker layer in the back. This will really help to create more depth as we start making our hardscape layout. To make our layout, we like to use rocks and or wood. We also refer to this as hardscape material. It's important to know the characteristics of your chosen hardscape material before you purchase it, as some rocks might leak calcium into the water and some types of wood might leak tannins or they may float. To prevent the wood from floating and potentially destroying your hardscape layout, you can either pre-soak it for a couple of weeks beforehand, you can weigh it down with some rocks. Or what I like to do is just glue my rocks and wood together to form a solid structure that also does not float. The hardscape really is the main structure of our aquascape, so it's important to spend some time on creating a beautiful hardscape. I usually take a couple days to get a desired hardscape layout. A lot of beginners struggle to create a nice looking hardscape, and that is completely normal. Nobody won the IRPLC contest with their first hardscape. And just like anything else, the more you practice, the better you will become at it. If you want to practice making hardscapes or aquascapes, I suggest you take a look at the program scape-it.io. Here you can basically make a virtual aquascape, so it's a great way to get some extra training. Now let's talk about plants, because there are hundreds if not thousands of different aquatic plants, in all different shapes and sizes, and some grow fast, and some grow very very slowly, some grow short and some grow long, and some prefer a lot of light and some prefer shadow. So before buying your plants, it's good to do some research on their requirements, if they would suit the idea for the kind of scape that you have in mind. 
You can find a lot of information on websites like dandelaplants.com or tropica.com. Traditionally, plants are grown above water in the nursery. These plants are more robust and can withstand shipping a lot better. Because they have been grown above water, these plants may start to look a little different after a few days in your aquarium when they transition to their submerged or underwater form. To clean them, simply take them out of their pot, remove the rock wool and divide them into portions. Now these days we see more and more in vitro plants. And these in vitro plants are grown in a laboratory under sterile conditions. And these plants are free from algae, snails and pesticides. Now even though these in vitro pots might look very small and more expensive compared to regular potted plants, they actually contain a higher quantity of plants. And in my opinion, in vitro plants also adapt faster to the conditions in our aquascape. Now a few tips for planting. To plant your aquascape, I recommend to use special aquascaping tweezers. These will make your life a lot easier. I prefer to plant in a wet substrate. I find that in a wet substrate, when I release the tweezers, the plants tend to stick better. I never really plant the aquascape when it's full with water. This might work when you're using heavy gravel or sand, but aquasol is a very light substrate. And especially in the beginning, it traps a lot of air bubbles. So when you start planting underwater, you're just gonna end up with a bunch of plants that just keep floating back up. When setting up a new aquascape, I really recommend you to plant densely from the beginning. A new setup can easily get into trouble with algae and more plants will make this startup easier. When I started aquascaping, I always tried to save money on plants. So I would just buy one pot of each type of plant because I thought they will grow and multiply over time anyway. And this just gave me a lot of unnecessary problems with algae. For the plants to grow healthy and colorful, we need light. Now this is a topic that can easily get complicated because it raises so many questions. Therefore, I'm going to keep this simple by suggesting you to use an LED light which has white, red, green and blue LEDs and that is dimmable as well. So you can increase or decrease the intensity when needed. I would also like to suggest that you keep your lights on daily for an average of 8 hours and do this with a timer so you have a consistent photo period every day of every week. And it does not really matter when during the day you have your photo period. If you are away from home during the day and you want to enjoy your aquascape as much as possible in the evening, then just set your photo period from 2pm till 10pm for example. Carbon dioxide is one of the most important nutrients for aquatic plants. A regular tap water only contains a small amount of CO2, which is not enough for most plants. Therefore, a lot of plants used in aquascaping require a CO2 injection. A professional CO2 kit for aquariums consists of a pressurized cylinder, a regulator with a solenoid valve and a diffuser. Besides that, it's also good to have a drop checker in your aquarium. This will tell you if you are injecting enough CO2 or not. The basic rule for CO2 is that it comes on an hour before your lights turn on and turns off an hour before your lights turns off as well. And my advice is to invest in a professional CO2 kit from the beginning. This will set you onto a great start with the aquascaping hobby. Now setting up a CO2 system can be quite scary and overwhelming. So check out my complete CO2 setup guide if you want to get more familiar on this topic. Professional CO2 systems are quite expensive. And if you are on a low budget, then DIY CO2 can be a good option. I suggest you check out some of my DIY CO2 videos that I have on my channel. To maintain good water quality in our aquascape, we need to use a filter. Now, there are a lot of different types of filters on the market, so let's go over a few of the popular ones. Starting with internal filters, even though I have a few aquascapes with internal filters, this would not be my first option, as they can take up a lot of space inside the aquarium and are not very stylish, so they need to be covered by either hardscape or plants. Other than that, internal filters are usually quite cheap, so they are a good option if you are on a budget. The next hang on the back filters, these are becoming more and more popular and are a good option for small cube aquariums. I wouldn't use them on larger aquariums as they usually don't provide enough flow. Now my favorite option would be external canister filters. These are great because they don't take up any space inside the aquarium. They have a lot of room for filter media and you can combine them with glass lily pipes, which always look very good in an aquarium. When choosing a filter, the most important thing is the flow rate or the turnover rate. 
Especially in a high-tech setup with a lot of light and CO2 injection, we need to have enough flow. So I always recommend to look for a filter that has a flow rate of 10 times the volume of the aquarium. Now to make the most of our aquascape, we need to perform regular maintenance. And in general, I would say that there are three types of maintenance. We have the daily maintenance. This consists of feeding our fish and feeding our plants with liquid fertilizer. And this really shouldn't take more than five minutes. Then the weekly maintenance. This consists of a 50% water change, so taking out old water and topping it up with fresh water. This is important to remove any excess nutrients or excess waste organics. During the weekly maintenance, I also like to clean the glass of the aquarium. Then lastly we have the monthly maintenance, and this is usually a bit of a longer maintenance session, where we trim the plants, we remove any algae, we clean the glass, and we also clean our glass lily pipes and our diffusers. And the key to any successful aquascape is to really enjoy these maintenance sessions. In order for our plants to grow lush and beautiful, we need to provide them with enough nutrients. And as I said earlier, our chosen soil substrate will provide a lot of nutrients to the plant roots. But the nutrients from the soil is usually not enough. We need to dose a liquid fertilizer as well, and we can divide these in macro and micronutrients. So you can buy all these nutrients separately, but I prefer to keep it simple with one bottle that has everything in there that the plants need. Now especially if you are using aquasol as a substrate, the first few weeks the soil will leak a lot of nutrients in the water column. And these nutrients are plenty enough or even too much for our plants. So because of that, I usually don't start dosing liquid fertilizers until the third or the fourth week of a new aquascape. Because too many nutrients in the water can potentially lead to algae issues. The last thing I would like to talk about is the early stages of a new setup aquascape. Because it can take up to 3 months before an aquascape is fully established and matured. Try to see those first few months as a testing phase, where you're testing if you're injecting enough CO2 or you're dosing enough fertilizers. And in these 3 months we will probably get some algae issues. So it's important that we stay on top of the maintenance and identify any potential algae problems. There's a whole playlist on my channel with videos that tackle almost every type of algae. And I also have a video with 13 tips to help you establish your new aquascape. So do check out those videos as well. Aquascaping is an amazing hobby which has brought me a lot of joy over the years. Creating a slice of nature in your home and seeing it develop over time is beautiful to watch and extremely relaxing as well. I hope this video will help you get a great start into aquascaping. As always, if you have any questions, comment down below. Thank you for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.